In mathematics, a topos UK, US, plural topoi or, or toposes is a category that behaves like the category of sheaves of sets on a topological space or more generally, on a site. Topoi behave much like the category of sets and possess a notion of localization, they are in a sense a generalization of point set topology. The Grothendieck topoi find applications in algebraic geometry, the more general elementary topoi are used in logic. <laughs> Grothendieck topoi, topoi in geometry Since the introduction of sheaves into mathematics in the 1940s, a major theme has been to study a space by studying sheaves on a space. This idea was expounded by Alexander Grothendieck by introducing the notion of a topos. The main utility of this notion is in the abundance of situations in mathematics where topological heuristics are very effective but an honest topological space is lacking, it is sometimes possible to find a topos formalizing the heuristic. An important example of this programmatic idea is the atail topos of a scheme. Topic. Equivalent definitions. Let C be a category. A theorem of Giraud states that the following are equivalent. There is a small category D and an inclusion C left arrow curving right presh D that admits a finite limit preserving left adjoint. C is the category of sheaves on a Grothendieck site. C satisfies Giraud's axioms. Below, a category with these properties is called a Grothendieck topos. Here presh D denotes the category of contravariant functors from D to the category of sets, such a contravariant functor is frequently called a presheaf. Giraud's axioms Giraud's axioms for a category C are C has a small set of generators, and admits all small colimits. Furthermore, fiber products distribute over coproducts. That is, given a set I, an I-indexed coproduct mapping to A, and a morphism A, A the pullback is an I-indexed coproduct of the pullbacks I element of I B I times A A I element of I B I times A A display style left coprod underscore I in I B underscore I right times underscore A A Kong coprod underscore I in I B underscore I times underscore A A sums in C are disjoint. In other words, the fiber product of x and y over their sum is the initial object in C. All equivalence relations in C are effective, the last axiom needs the most explanation. If x is an object of C, an equivalence relation R on x is a map Rx times x in C such that for any object y in c the induced map home y r home y x times home y x gives an ordinary equivalence relation on the set home y x since c has colimits we may form the coequalizer of the two maps r x call this x r the equivalence relation is effective if the canonical map r x times X R X display style R to X times underscore X R X is an isomorphism. Topic examples. Giraud's theorem already gives sheaves on sites as a complete list of examples. Note, however, that non-equivalent sites often give rise to equivalent topoi. 
As indicated in the introduction, sheaves on ordinary topological spaces motivate many of the basic definitions and results of Topo's theory. The category of sets is an important special case, it plays the role of a point in Topo's theory. Indeed, a set may be thought of as a sheaf on a point. More exotic examples, and the raison d'etre of Topo's theory, come from algebraic geometry. To a scheme and even a stack one may associate an A-tail topos, an FPPF topos, a Nisnovich topos. Another important example of a topos is from the crystalline site. Counterexamples Topos theory is, in some sense, a generalization of classical point-set topology. One should therefore expect to see old and new instances of pathological behavior. For instance, there is an example due to Pierre de Line of a non-trivial topos that has no points. See below for the definition of points of a topos. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Geometric morphisms. If x and y are topoi, a geometric morphism u, x, y is a pair of adjoint functors u, u, where u asterisk, y x is left adjoint to u, x, y such that u preserves finite limits. Note that u automatically preserves colimits by virtue of having a right adjoint. By Freyd's adjoint functor theorem, to give a geometric morphism x y is to give a functor u, y x that preserves finite limits and all small colimits. Thus geometric morphisms between topoi may be seen as analogues of maps of locales. If x and y are topological spaces and u is a continuous map between them, then the pullback and pushforward operations on sheaves yield a geometric morphism between the associated topoi. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Points of topoi. A point of a topos X is defined as a geometric morphism from the topos of sets to X. If x is an ordinary space and x is a point of x, then the functor that takes a sheaf f to its stock fx has a right adjoint. The skyscraper sheaf functor, so an ordinary point of x also determines a topos theoretic point. These may be constructed as the pullback pushforward along the continuous map x, 1x. Essential geometric morphisms A geometric morphism U, U, is essential if U has a further left adjoint U, or equivalently by the adjoint functor theorem if U preserves not only finite but all small limits. <laughs> Ring to poi A ringed topos is a pair x, R, where x is a topos and R is a commutative ring object in x. Most of the constructions of ringed spaces go through for ringed topoi. The category of R module objects in x is an abelian category with enough injectives. A more useful abelian category is the subcategory of quasi-coherent R modules, these are R modules that admit a presentation. Another important class of ringed topoi, besides ringed spaces, are the e-tail topoi of deline mumford stacks. Topic: <laughs> Homotopy theory of topoi. Michael Artin and Barry Mazur associated to the site underlying a topos a pro-simplicial set up to homotopy, it's better to consider it in HO pro SS, C. Edwards, using this inverse system of simplicial sets one may sometimes associate to a homotopy invariant in classical topology an inverse system of invariants in topos theory. The study of the prosimplicial set associated to the e-tail topos of a scheme is called a-tail homotopy theory. In good cases, if the scheme is no theorian and geometrically unibranch, this prosimplicial set is pro-finite. Topic: 
Topic: Elementary to Poi, to Poi in logic. Topic: Introduction. A traditional axiomatic foundation of mathematics is set theory, in which all mathematical objects are ultimately represented by sets even functions, which map between sets. More recent work in category theory allows this foundation to be generalized using topoi, each topos completely defines its own mathematical framework. The category of sets forms a familiar topos, and working within this topos is equivalent to using traditional set-theoretic mathematics. But one could instead choose to work with many alternative topoi. A standard formulation of the axiom of choice makes sense in any topos, and there are topoi in which it is invalid. Constructivists will be interested to work in a topos without the law of excluded middle. If symmetry under a particular group G is of importance, one can use the topos consisting of all G sets. It is also possible to encode an algebraic theory, such as the theory of groups, as a topos, in the form of a classifying topos. The individual models of the theory, i.e. the groups in our example, then correspond to functors from the encoding topos to the category of sets that respect the topos structure. Topic. Formal definition When used for foundational work a topos will be defined axiomatically, set theory is then treated as a special case of topos theory. Building from category theory, there are multiple equivalent definitions of a topos. The following has the virtue of being concise. A topos is a category that has the following two properties. All limits taken over finite index categories exist. Every object has a power object. This plays the role of the power set in set theory. Formally, a power object of an object X display style X is a pair P X X display style P X knee underscore X with X P X times X display style knee underscore X subset X P X times X, which classifies relations in the following sense. First, note that for every object I display style I amorphism R I P X display style R colon I to P X a family of subsets induces a subobject I X X element of R I I times X Display style i x tilde tilde x in R i subset x i times x. Formally, this is defined by pulling back x display style knee underscore x along R times x i times x p x times x display style r times x i times x to px times x the universal property of a power object is that every relation arises in this way giving a bijective correspondence between relations r i times x display style r subset x i times x and morphisms R I P X display style R colon I to P X from finite limits and power objects one can derive that all colimits taken over finite index categories exist 
The category has a subobject classifier. The category is Cartesian closed. In some applications, the role of the subobject classifier is pivotal, whereas power objects are not. Thus, some definitions reverse the roles of what is defined and what is derived. Topic: <laughs> Logical functors. A logical functor is a functor between toposes that preserves finite limits and power objects. Logical functors preserve the structures that toposes have. In particular, they preserve finite colimits, subobject classifiers, and exponential objects. Topic. Explanation A topos as defined above can be understood as a Cartesian closed category for which the notion of subobject of an object has an elementary or first order definition. This notion, as a natural categorical abstraction of the notions of subset of a set, subgroup of a group, and more generally subalgebra of any algebraic structure, predates the notion of topos. It is definable in any category, not just to poi, in second-order language, i.e. in terms of classes of morphisms instead of individual morphisms, as follows. Given two monics m, n from respectively y and z to x, we say that m n when there exists a morphism p, y z for which n p equals m, inducing a preorder on monics to x when m n and n m we say that m and n are equivalent. The subobjects of X are the resulting equivalence classes of the monics to it. In a topos, subobject becomes, at least implicitly, a first-order notion, as follows. As noted above, a topos is a category C having all finite limits and hence in particular the empty limit or final object 1. It is then natural to treat morphisms of the form X, 1X as elements X element of X morphisms F, X Y thus correspond to functions mapping each element X element of X to the element F X element of Y, with application realized by composition. One might then think to define a subobject of X as an equivalence class of monics M, X X having the same image or range M X, X element of X. The catch is that two or more morphisms may correspond to the same function, that is, we cannot assume that C is concrete in the sense that the functor C1, C set is faithful. For example the category GRPH of graphs and their associated homomorphisms is a topos whose final object 1 is the graph with one vertex and one edge a self-loop, but is not concrete because the elements 1G of a graph G correspond only to the self-loops and not the other edges, nor the vertices without self-loops. Whereas the second-order definition makes G and the subgraph of all self-loops of G with their vertices distinct subobjects of G unless every edge is, and every vertex has, a self-loop, this image-based one does not. This can be addressed for the graph example and related examples via the Unita lemma as described in the further examples section below, but this then ceases to be first-order. Tapoi provide a more abstract, general, and first-order solution. As noted above, a topos C has a subobject classifier ω, namely an object of C with an element T element of ω, the generic subobject of C, having the property that every monic M, X, X arises as a pullback of the generic subobject along a unique morphism F, X ω, as per figure 1. Now the pullback of a monic is a monic, and all elements including T are monics since there is only one morphism to one from any given object, whence the pullback of T along F, X omega is a monic. The monics to X are therefore in bijection with the pullbacks of T along morphisms from X to omega. The latter morphisms partition the monics into equivalence classes each determined by a morphism F, X omega, the characteristic morphism of that class, which we take to be the subobject of X characterized or named by F. All this applies to any topos, whether or not concrete. 
In the concrete case, namely C 1, faithful, for example the category of sets, the situation reduces to the familiar behavior of functions. Here the monics m, x, x are exactly the injections 1, 1 functions from x to x, and those with a given image m x, x element of x constitute the subobject of x corresponding to the morphism f, x omega for which f minus 1 t is that image. The monics of a subobject will in general have many domains, all of which however will be in bijection with each other. To summarize, this first-order notion of subobject classifier implicitly defines for a topos the same equivalence relation on monics to X as had previously been defined explicitly by the second-order notion of subobject for any category. The notion of equivalence relation on a class of morphisms is itself intrinsically second order, which the definition of topos neatly sidesteps by explicitly defining only the notion of subobject classifier omega, leaving the notion of subobject of X as an implicit consequence characterized and hence nameable by its associated morphism F, X omega. Topic. Further examples Every Grothendieck topos is an elementary topos, but the converse is not true since every Grothendieck topos is co-complete, which is not required from an elementary topos. The categories of finite sets, of finite G sets actions of a group G on a finite set, and of finite graphs are elementary topoi that are not Grothendieck topoi. If C is a small category, then the functor category SETC, consisting of all covariant functors from C to sets, with natural transformations as morphisms, is a topos. For instance, the category GRPH of graphs of the kind permitting multiple directed edges between two vertices is a topos. A graph consists of two sets, an edge set and a vertex set, and two functions s, t between those sets, assigning to every edge e its source s e and target t e. GRPH is thus equivalent to the functor category s e t c, where c is the category with two objects e and v and two morphisms s, t, e v giving respectively the source and target of each edge. The Unita lemma asserts that COP embeds in SETC as a full subcategory. In the graph example the embedding represents COP as the subcategory of SETC whose two objects are V as the one vertex no edge graph and E as the two vertex one edge graph both as functors, and whose two nonidentity morphisms are the two graph homomorphisms from V to E both as natural transformations, the natural transformations from V to an arbitrary graph functor G constitute the vertices of G while those from E to G constitute its edges. Although SETC, which we can identify with GRPH, is not made concrete by either V or E alone, the functor U, GRPH set 2 sending object G to the pair of sets GRPH V, G, GRPH E, G and morphism H, GH to the pair of functions GRPH V, H, GRPH E, H is faithful. That is, a morphism of graphs can be understood as a pair of functions, one mapping the vertices and the other the edges, with application still realized as composition but now with multiple sorts of generalized elements. This shows that the traditional concept of a concrete category as one whose objects have an underlying set can be generalized to cater for a wider range of topoi by allowing an object to have multiple underlying sets, that is, to be multisorted. Topic. See also History of topos theory Homotopy hypothesis Intuitionistic type theory Infinity topos Quasitopos Notes <laughs>